Yo. Hey everybody, back again with another Teach It Tuesday. Finally going up on a Tuesday. We're finally getting back in the swing of things with our newborn son, Sire. And we're gonna make a cute little pair of pants to pair with the top that we did in the last video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the last video, the PJ Raglan top pairs perfectly with these lounge sweats, um, also called shorties, depending on which version you do. We're doing the sweats um, from Lowland Kids as well. So this is a super cute like boutique dupe for like the rib knit. And I got this rib knit from Knit Pop. It's the two, uh, two by one rib knit. It's super cute. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so for the pattern piece, you're gonna need this pants part here. Cut at the pant line here. I like to keep my pattern piece all together so that I don't cut two different pieces for the shorts and the pants and then I just fold these little tabs in on the side and then um, you'll do need two of these mirrored images and then the, that's the back and that's the front and that you'll need to pay attention to that okay and then this is the waistband piece it is really long but you're gonna fold it and you cut it on a fold there and then you'll fold it down over on the waist this is the cuff piece here and you'll cut two of these not on a fold Okay, so then here's what I got. I got my two leg pieces, mirrored images, and that's how you can see. I cut them um, folded on a folded piece of fabric, and then I cut around the pieces so that they're already put together. And then moving on to the waistband, this is what it looks like. You cut on the fold. That's the fold right there, and then um, it will be folded. And then those are the cuffs. This video is coming soon over here, this patriotic stuff. All right, so what you're gonna do, this is super easy. I may do it a little different than the pattern just because this is how I do it. All right, so first things first, my rib knit fabric here, these are the leg cuffs. So what I'm gonna do is fold it across the stretch, across the stretch, that's my hamburger fold. We're doing the hamburger hot dog method here. And then I fold it across the grain line. And the best part about rib knit is you know that rib knit, the stretch is going with the ridges. So um, it's easier to determine your grain line and your stretch, which is super important to pay attention to when you're making a garment. Um, that was one of the first things that I made a mistake on when I taught myself how to sew. So I didn't know you had to pay attention to that. So don't make that mistake. You have me to help you. Okay. So here is that waistband. This is the fold part here. So I've already folded it once across the stretch. And so I'm just going to fold it up now on the grain line. And so this part here, this part here, and this part here, we're going to serge and make these cuffs and waistband here. And then here, we're going to go ahead and do the crotch curve. So I'm serging or zigzag stitching the crotch curve crotch curve and the way you determine if it's the crotch or the inseam is the back is higher than the front so there's a slope here and then the actual part that's going to attach to the cuffs is going to be straight across so make sure that you're paying attention to that and not sewing the inseam first so I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back all right so I've got the cuffs sewn up the waistband and the crotch curves are sewn up so I'm going to go ahead and snip so here's the seam here with those raw edges this is that folded edge i'm gonna go ahead and snip these two points on the cuffs so that when i add the cuffs to the leg bands or to the leg holes it'll be easy same thing with the waistband this is the seam this is the folded edge and snip that and then i'm going to open up the cuff here and like i said this waistband is really wide because it's intended to be folded over. Um, so, if you want it to be smaller, you might want to take some width off of it, but I love how it looks folded up. So I'm going to match up the back seam with that snip point that we did to get my side points here. And you can go ahead and add two more points to your cuffs. I just add, I just do two points on the cuffs because they're so small. And I'm going to do these in the round. Um, I showed, if you want to learn how to do these in the flat, go to the PJ top that we did last week and um, don't do the ham hot method you'd want to keep it open and just do the hot dog fold and no hamburger fold and then put them right sides together 
across the bottom here and you could do the, them on the flat. I'm gonna do them on the round just because I like the way it looks on the pants. Okay, so I've got that. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my cuffs out. So then there's the cuff. And this you can also flip up and down if you want to. If you think that the cuffs are a little too long, you can flip them. All right. So flipping these cuffs out. All right, so we got two cuffs and a waistband. And then we have our crotch curve. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up this, like this. And then you're gonna match up that front and back crotch curve there. And then you have the entire crotch inseam part here. So you're gonna match up your leg pieces here, leg pieces here, and but still right sides together, and then you're gonna serge this entire crotch part there. All right, I'm gonna take you guys with me because we're gonna add everything else on the serger over here. And again, if you don't have a serger, all of these steps can be blah, 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 blah. If you don't have a serger, all of these steps can be completed on a sewing machine with a stretch stitch. My favorite is the zigzag, um, but I have a serger, so that's how I'm showing you how to do it. So let's go over to the serger. Okay, so I've got the bottom part here. So that's a leg hole, and I'm going to start on the edge of the leg hole here. Right sides together, and I'm just going to serge this entire crotch part here, making sure that the, um, the crotch curve seams line up. And then just making sure that this other side lines up. about securing those tails and then what I'm gonna do on the leg hole is make a snip on that folded edge here make a snip on this folded edge here and I'm gonna do the same thing with the waistband this waistband hole part up here I'm gonna match up the front and back seams and then find each side and then we'll put it up match those up with the waistband and cuff so that's what it looks like as you can see, the back is higher than the front, so that's how you know which is which. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the cuffs first. So my garment is still inside out, and I'm going to add my cuff into. So my cuff is right side out. As you can see, the seam is hidden, and I am going to add the seam to the inside of the leg here. So I'm going to match up the seam and the cuff is going into the leg hole like this so that all my raw edges are going to be here that I sew in the round. So I'm going to add this in to the leg hole, push it down to get the raw edges to match up so that I'm going to match up the seam here. And then what I like to do, I hope you guys can see it, so my cuff seam is going this way. I'm going to make my leg hole seam go this way. That's called nesting your seam, and it will make that look more crisp um, when you flip it out and the seams are lined up. So then I'm matching up the two points of my cuff that I cut here with the one point of my leg hole, and I'm just going to go ahead and serge in the round. Okay, so once I get it going, I'm going to stretch the cuff just enough that it lays flat on the leg hole. Let's see if I can get you guys a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. All right. And you're just going to remember to move that one pin unless you did um, more than one point. Um, then you'll need to remove all the pins. All right. And so then I'm going to go around and go over where I started. When you overlap, it's important um, to either turn your knife off if you haven't got good with um, not catching the stitching of your already finished seam because then it will unravel. This is a knit picker. If you watched the last video, you'll hopefully know how to use this. If not, here's another little tutorial. Um, this is what it looks like. It's from waywalk.com. It's like a dollar. Um, grab a couple of them because this handle breaks. This little black dot here is actually hot glue, which as you can see is doing nothing for me. <laughs> But if you pull too hard, this little metal part comes out of the little handle. So, forewarning. <laughs> I like to open this little latch part here, put it all the way back, 
and then you're going to sandwich this little knit picker thing in the seam poke it out where that tail is that you're wanting to do pop this latch kind of closed but not all the way closed because you're wanting to put this tail in around that hook close the latch and pull it through and then cut off the excess and there you go that's how you make sure that that is secured and that cuff is sewn in the round so now we're going to do the other leg hole real fast since you should be an expert now <laughs> All right, our cuffs are added on there. I'm not gonna flip them out just yet. And then we're gonna add our waistband. So remember, front and back. So the back is higher than the front to account for that booty, <laughs> especially for the, the diaper wearing babies. So um, that's really, it, not necessarily just the diaper wearing babies because the older girls get some junk in their trunk too. So make sure that you're doing it um, with the back as the high rise and the front as the low rise. Otherwise it may not fit like you want it to fit. All right. On another note, make sure you're checking your child's measurements when you're doing this because I've seen a lot of people say, it doesn't fit my kid. And then they're like, I didn't measure. And I'm like, okay, that's probably why. Because most of these patterns are pretty, most of them, don't get me wrong, most of them are pretty true to size chart. Um, the size chart may be a little wonky compared to your child's ready to wear, which is like store-bought stuff. So just make sure you're checking that out. And especially if you're selling this stuff, make sure you offer your customers a size chart and tell them to to use it <laughs> all right so here is we're gonna do basically the exact same thing that we just did with the cuffs but just bigger and four points instead of two all right so here is the waistband this is the back part here so i'm going to match up my seam of the waistband cuff to the waistband here so the garment is inside out still and i'm putting the cuff on the inside I'm going to nest this back seam here and I'm not going to add a tag but this right here is where you would actually add a tag I'll show you what it looks like real fast I forgot to do that in the last video but this is what that would look like so here's my foldable tag and I would literally just put it in on this seam this back seam here and then just surge underneath and let go of it and it'll be sewn in there so when you flip this waistband cuff up it will be perfectly hidden inside the garment but I'm not gonna do that because this is for my son and I don't wanna waste any um, business tags. So let's go ahead and match up this stuff here. So we have all of our points, match them up, pin them, clip them, whatever you need to do. I normally use three because then I just hold the last one. All right, so then here is the middle point here. Okay. All right, so then this is the last little point here. So make sure that your two points on your cuff and your one point on your um, pants part actually line up. And then get started again. Make sure that needle goes through the fabric once before you start pulling. And then you're just gonna pull the cuff to lay flat with the leg opening or the waistband opening. <laughs> So I'm just going to pull my pins out as I go. So of course that's where we would have added the tag in. But again, like I said, I didn't do it. So you would just put it over the seam, like I said, and then sew over it. Tags are important if you're selling your garments for compliance. And I'll link a group below to help you with that. Um, it is a little crazy um, to get started, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard. Um, but compliance is important and is absolutely necessary to be a legal business. So, all right, almost done here. I'm gonna overlap where I started. Secure your tail one more time, one final time, because this is pretty much done. Everything else that you could do to it would be optional. And I'm going to top stitch the waistband down just because 
I want to. <laughs> All right, so then now the garment is completely inside out and then you'll flip it right side out. Flip it, flip it, flip it. All right, and so then that's what it looks like. Let me, I got a little tail here sticking out. That's what it looks like. Waistband, and like I said, the waistband is meant to be flipped down like that. Super cute, and you can flip these cuffs up if you don't like them being so long. This is a super cute little pattern, and like I said, um, you can top stitch if you want. I think I'm just not going to do it, um, but super cute. So let's go see this completed with the top. All right, so here are our little lounge pants, which are super cute. I can't wait to put them on, little man. So there's those lounge pants. And like I said, you can flip these cuffs up if you want, if you need to, um, if you have a short little guy or girl. And this is a super gender neutral pattern, so that's why I like it. Because if you're um, not wanting to find out, like if you're pregnant and not wanting to find out the gender of your child, this is a super cute one that you can sew up. And especially in this white, super cute. Um, and then here's the top that we did last week. Uh, right? So then that's what it looks like. And then of course you would tuck the little shirt in. And it's super cute. I can't wait to put it on him. And so everything's just folded. These are folded, this is folded down. And then this has cuffs and the neck band. It's super cute, um, but it's, it's absolutely a dupe for those cute little rib knit boutique patterns. And since you handmade it, you know that the quality is gonna last a lot longer than those little boutique um, China shop uh, mass produced little outfits. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned some new tips. Hopefully, hope you guys have this new pattern that you can put in your arsenal. If you've been watching, if you haven't watched our videos, we put out a new video um, lately every week, but we're supposed to be doing it every Tuesday. We're getting back to that. Um, we did just have a newborn who's, that's what this outfit's for. Um, his name is Sire Lee. He's wonderful. We're learning him. He's a little different than his sister. But um, if you are loving this video and you don't know who we are, we're Recapture Values. We're actually a small shop that um, show our favorite patterns to you guys to kind of help you either learn how to make them for your children or learn how to make them for um, your business to make some money, especially during the pandemic. A lot of people, you know, were stuck at home and this is a great way to learn how to do that. Just make sure you're taking those next steps to learn how to do it legally as far as compliance goes. And if you are a business, you will have to pay taxes on this stuff um, as far as what you're selling. So make sure that you're not getting yourself into trouble um, doing this illegally. So um, I can post some things down, but it is based on your state. And we're out of Arkansas, so it's a little different. If I give you advice, um, it'll be based on my state. So just look up your state and small business administration I believe SBA look up that and how to start a business in your state and that's the best way to get that information but um, again if you haven't if you don't know who we are and you found this video check out our other videos we have like tons of videos on tons of patterns so check that out make sure you subscribe and we've noticed that unless you hit that notification bell um, you're not going to be getting updates. I don't know what's going on, but hit that notification bell so that you get updates of when we post a new video. Because sometimes we'll post a spur of the moment video, and sometimes, or most of the time, it's regular. Um, we're getting back to that, like I said. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.